Accounting Equation and Excel. Cash payment for the purchase of inventory. Get ready and some coffee because we're learning the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. In Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. Or you could just construct your own worksheet as we go from here or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically continuing on with a template at this point in time. How However, adding to that template as needed as we go through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing this time. Quick recap of what we have done thus far. We've entered the beginning balances into our accounting system here using the accounting equation as a type of trial balance that we will build our financial statements from, our financial reports. And then we entered transactions that are typical to a new business that needs capital in order to purchase what they need to purchase. In other words, they need cash for the startup costs to buy things like property, plants, and equipment, and now inventory in order to then use that to generate revenue. That would be transactions related to the owner putting money into the, uh, into the business or possibly taking a loan out. Then we took some of that money and we purchased property, plant, and equipment that we're going to use to help generate revenue in the future. So that's an investment of the business in not stocks and bonds in this case, but furniture and equipment that we're going to use to build or generate revenue. And now, of course, considering our business is selling guitars in our store, we're imagining we need to buy the inventory of the guitars. So when we buy inventory, remember there's a couple forms that our transactions are going to be mirroring. It's useful to remember the forms and link them even though we're putting it in place in terms of an accounting equation, basically transaction or journal entry. The forms typically used for the purchase, if you're using a QuickBooks or a zero, some kind of accounting software is possibly a purchase order and then you're going to have a bill or a check type form. Quick recap of those items. Purchase order is really only a request for inventory and is usually only going to be there if you're in a larger type of business or a business that has more you know, power over the transaction on the purchase of inventory because what is happening with a purchase order is you're requesting, in this case, for them to send us guitars without payment. It's just a request. Then once we get the guitars, we're going to check and make sure that they are all uh, there and whatnot. We have the inventory and then we have the bill within the box of the guitars that we're then going to enter into our system either as a bill or pay off the check at that point in time. Note that's different than what we usually do when we buy stuff online, for example, where we go online and we pay for it before they ship it to us. In that case, we've already kind of owned it at the point in time we paid for it because we've actually paid for it at that point in time, even though we haven't received it. So a purchase order, therefore, is an internal transaction that you may or may not have depending on how the inventory purchase process is set up. And it doesn't actually record a transaction 
but needs to be tracked so that when we get the actual inventory, we can tie it out to the purchase order. When we actually buy the inventory, when we pay for it, we can imagine the box of guitars coming to us. Then we can either take the bill that's in the box, we can imagine. Remember, the bill is an invoice to the person who sent the bill to the purchase that's giving us or selling us the inventory. To us, it's we're going to th think of it as a bill. Now, that physical bill is something that I could put into my accounting system as a bill. But remember, the data input in the accounting system is more specific. The data input form for a bill in my system means accounts payable is going to go up. That's what a bill form means. It's a data input form in an accounting software, typically. Or I can take the physical bill that's in the box of guitars or when I, whenever I buy the inventory, if it's not a purchase order process, and I can pay for it electronically, possibly. In that case, even though I got a bill, I didn't enter an invoice, a bill form into the system, but rather just paid the bill with a check, meaning a decrease to the checking account. The form related to a decrease in the checking account is typically a check form, or some software will call it an expense form, if it's not an actual physical check, the only difference being the expense form doesn't have a check number on it. But remember the check form or some equivalent to it, an expense form is just the form that is decreasing uh, the checking account from a data input standpoint, even if you're using an electronic transfer to transfer it. So we're gonna purchase this inventory. Other problem with inventory is that we got a subsidiary ledger we have to deal with Remembering there's multiple ways that you can deal with inventory, uh, that being in your accounting system, in like a QuickBooks, for example, you could enter the inventory on a perpetual inventory system, which means QuickBooks will track not only the dollar amounts, but also the units of inventory. However, that adds more detail and complexity to the startup process of entering the detail into the system. And if you have more complex inventory needs, like a lot of different types of inventory and so on, then you might need a more sophisticated, that's when you might need more sophisticated mods and mo models of inventory to help track the higher inventory levels. If you want point of purchase scanning and stuff like that, that's gonna be more complex with inventory like you might see in like a grocery store or something like that. If you're a small business, you might track the inventory outside of QuickBooks using a perpetual inventory system, or if you have an online business and you're selling stuff from a website or something like that, then you might track the inventory on the website and then do a periodic inventory adjustment so that you get your financial statements correct on a periodic basis, at least for taxes, which means you have to do it at least once a year so that you can properly record inventory for tax purposes. All right, so our subsidiary ledger is gonna be over here in our worksheet and we're gonna imagine that we're gonna do this on a perpetual inventory type of system. So we're gonna purchase the inventory. We're gonna list out the types of guitars that we're buying with just these labels up top. And then we're gonna have the purchase side and then that's gonna tie out to the ending inventory. And then this total inventory is gonna tie out to what's in our actual ledger. So that's gonna be somewhat of a tedious process. If you have your QuickBooks system set up or some kind of accounting system, it's a lot more automated, but again, it's an area of, of concern for inventory. And it's an area where if you are working in an accounting system, you have to determine, do you wanna deal with inventory and what kind of clients do you wanna be picking up? Even if you're dealing with inventory, what kind of inventory clients do you wanna specialize in? Because they're gonna have different needs. Again, don't let the clients bully you around just you've got to get you've got to get your game plan in and tell them this is <laughs> this is what I'm doing and that this if you don't fit into my structure then I have to you know I have to I have to do what I'm going to do to make the business work right so we're going to say let's say that we're going to buy um the inventory that we're going to buy let's say it's an ELP so I'm just going to imagine that we're going to write the check for the inventory we're going to buy an ELP an ERP an EPSP and an EPSH. These are just the names and numbers that I put next to the inventory. Uh, and you can imagine that we're building an invoice based on these items. So we're going to say this inventory type, 
we have 70 of them. And then on the on the ERP, we're gonna imagine we're gonna buy five of those, five of the EPSPs, and 14 of the EPSHs. I'm gonna indent this so I can make it look a little nicer. Home tab, uh, alignment, and indent. Now we can imagine this being on one invoice, but a lot of times it'll actually record the transaction, you know, line by line uh, within the detail of your of your ledger. So we're going to actually record it here with with a transaction for each line item that might be on. This isn't an invoice; it would be a check form. So the form that would record this would be like a check form or an expense type form. We're not going to enter a bill this time. The bill will do in in possibly in a future presentation. Right now, we're going to imagine you can imagine that we're buying the inventory possibly online or physically in the, the shop of our vendor and we're paying for it directly, either with a check or an electronic transfer, or we're buying it online, but we're paying for it at the point in time we purchase it as opposed to entering a purchase order. Or you can imagine that we've already entered the purchase order, the inventory has been shipped to us, and now we've got the bill within the box of guitars, and instead of entering it into the system as a bill, we're gonna enter it as a check. We're just gonna pay it off, which might be an electronic transfer or an expense form. All right, so <laughs> hopefully that makes some sense. So if I go all the way to the right, we've got then the the our, our line items on the subsidiary ledger for inventory. So here's our ELP, and I can see the cost is $400. So there's two things that I'm gonna have to deal with here uh, when I deal with inventory. The sales price, which I'm not concerned with at this point in time, because I'm purchasing the inventory. If I was to add inventory items into my accounting system, I need to know the sales price because the sales price is what's gonna be populated on the sales form, invoice forms, and sales receipt forms. But right now when I purchase it, I'm only really concerned about tracking the cost at this point in time. This isn't what I'm gonna sell them for. This is what I'm purchasing them for, which will increase the cost of inventory and be expensed when sold in the form of cost of goods sold. All right, so we're gonna say then, let's go back on over and see if I can work this out. So I'm gonna scroll down and say that this ELP is gonna go into inventory. I'm gonna do a formula, which is gonna be a little tedious. It's gonna equal the 70 units. And then I'm gonna say times, and I'm gonna go scroll all the way up. And I'm gonna go all the way to the right to find my ledgers over here and here's my elp there's the cost i'm going to say they cost these inventory items 400 dollars a unit so i enter that so uh the inventory then went up twenty-eight thousand. i think that's correct is that right i think I, I think that's what i wanted it to do okay and then let's do that again the one underneath it i'm going to say it's five units that's an erp so I'm going to remember that ERP times. I'm going to scroll all the way to the top, scroll to the right till I get to my sub ledger so I can get the cost. There's the ERP. What's the cost of my ERPs? They're $440. So that means we're going to buy 2,200 of inventory. Let's do the next one. This is going to be an EPSP. We're saying five of those times. And then I'll scroll up to the EPSP all the way to the top, all the way to the right. I'm looking for the EPSP, which is down here. So they cost $480. Okay. And then one more time, we've got the EPSH. So we're going to say we, we're going to buy 14 of those times, scrolling all the way to the top, EPSH, scrolling to the right. So the EPSH is down here. So there it is. They cost uh, $320. So $320. Okay. So I think I, hopefully I've got those right. So the other side of the transaction is just going to be cash because we're going to, we're going to be paying for them. So it's just going to be like a normal transaction, except I have to deal with the subsidiary ledger. So I'm going to say negative of that number negative. And I could just copy that down. Let's just copy that down. Copy that Roger out 10, four, 10, four. And then I can copy this down. It should, so no impact if I copy this down on assets because one asset went up, inventory, other asset went down. Notice what we did not do. 
we didn't record the inventory as cost of goods sold. We didn't expense it. That was That's what we would do on a cash-based system. But inventory usually forces us to not be on a cash-based system because I have to track the inventory and make sure that no one steals it and stuff, which means I need to put it on the books as an asset and not only know the dollar amount, but also know the the uh, the units of inventory. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this into my sub ledger now. So to do that, I'm going to do some fancy stuff here. I'm going to go to the view tab up top, windows. I'm going to unfreeze the panes and then I'm going to scroll down and I want to put this like at the bottom. So it's like at the bottom here. And then I'm going to use a split panes so that I can see these two things at one time. So I'm going to put my cursor right here in like D35 and then in the view tab, I want to go to the windows group and split the panes. So you see that puts a little X right here. So I want to keep this where it is. And then I'm going to click up in this upper portion. And that's where I'll find where I want to do my data input and pull the numbers from here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to scroll up, see this, see how cool that is. And then I'm going to go to the right. And then it's kind of confusing, but cool. If you get used to it, it'll, get, it'll make your head hurt for a while but once your head start hurt stops hurting you're like okay that's cool i think so anyways so this is going to be on uh one uh 15 wait 114 let's just type that in 114 and it didn't like the date one slash 14 oh man i'm going to right click format the cells i want to make it uh, current, I want to make it date format, just the month and day, boom. And then 114. Come on, man. All right, so the units, we're going to say equals. And then I got to make sure that I click down here because if I, if I use the arrows, it's going to mess up my screen. So I want to just click on it. Boom, uh, 70 units. Okay, so we bought 70 units. The unit cost, we're going to imagine is 400. Now you can imagine that we can either use like a, a weighted average or a first in first out. It's not going to matter for us right now because we're going to keep the same unit cost. But the reason you need a flow assumption is because the unit cost will change over time. And therefore you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to use a flow assumption and most softwares will either use first in first out or weighted average. So we're going to say, the units that we're purchasing, 70 units at $400 is a total cost of 28,000. Okay, now let's put that over here. I'm gonna put that in, that's my purchase part. I'm gonna pull that into ending inventory. So I'm just gonna pull that same thing in, 70 units times $400. I'm gonna multiply this out. This equals 70 times 400. I gotta make this a little bit larger. Come on. And then we'll put an underline under here. Home. Oh, man. That's not what I wanted to do. Underline. And then I'm going to sum this up. So now we have 71 units. And I'm going to imagine they all still cost $400. If, if they cost something different, I could act, calculate the average cost here if I wanted to. But I'm going to say they all cost $400. And this is going to be 71 times 400. So, so now we have $28,400 worth of uh, these ELP guitars. And then, and they represent 71 guitars, $400 each 20. Okay, so let's do the next one, the ERP. So the ERP is on the right. So we're gonna say, copy the, can I just say, copy this over here. And then I'm gonna say units we purchased here are gonna be five units. And these ones cost equal $440 for a total cost of five times 440, making that a little larger, a little larger. And then we'll just pull this over here to the ending inventory. So we got five units, they cost 440. That's gonna be five times 440, making this larger underline home tab font group underline summing this up equals the sum they all still cost 440 we're gonna say so now 
we have six units of these ERPs, which all cost $440, or that would be the average cost, we can think of it, 2,200. All right, and then we're gonna go back over here and underneath to where the E, P, E, P, uh, S, P is. And then I'm just gonna say same date, copy the date. We'll put that down here. So here we bought, we're gonna say five of these ones. And oh man, and they cost $480. So this equals five times 480. So that means we purchased 2,400. Let's pull that over here into the ending inventory. Five units, $480. This equals five times 480. Let's put an underline, underline sum it up equals the sum and then at 480 so now we've got this should be this times this did i do that so now we have six units at 480 2880 did i do that right up here this should be this times this and this did i do that right over here should be no this should be six times 440 so now we have six units at 440, which is 2,640. Okay, now it's right. Now we also have an, one more, an EPSH. So this is gonna be, once again, copy 114. How many units? We purchased 14 units. They cost, they cost $320. So 14 times 320. 4,480, pulling that into ending inventory, 14 times 320, multiplying that out, 14 times 320 is once again the 4,480, putting an underline, home tab font group underline, summing it up, little darling. So now we have 16 units, they all cost 320, so this will be 16 times 320, gives us 5,120. All right, so if I look at my total then over here, I could say now my total inventory is at 39,976. All right, I'm gonna, I need to check that to what's in my ending balance. So let's go ahead and unfreeze the panes. So I'm gonna go into the view tab. I'm gonna unsplit the panes go back to the right and I'm gonna put my cursor in D4 and freeze the panes so that the top bit will stay up tops when I scroll down. And let's see where we end it. So now let's put the balance. So I'm gonna put the ending balance here and let's see what we have in our ending balance and see if this works. Equals the sum is where we check ourselves. Better check yourself. That's right, I do check myself, okay? You don't need to yell at me like that. I am checking myself. I check myself all the time. All right, so then we're gonna say, let's put some zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. All right, do do zeros. And we'll copy those zeros down. So I'm gonna copy these zeros, not down to the, just down to the data input right there. Not to the last one, because we're gonna sum this up. And so let's just copy these zeros down to there. And I'll copy these zeros down to there. Copying these zeros down. Uh, I should have done my freeze pane one more down. I think I messed up the way I did my freeze pane. I don't like what it's doing. Uh, anyways, uh, so then I'm gonna then I'm gonna put an underline under this whole bit. Let's put an underline. Let's do this one at a time. Underline here, home tab. Underline, underline here, and then underline here to make it look nice. And then we'll copy this and we'll paste it across, pasting it formulas only. I've already done it there. So we'll paste it formulas only here. Pasting it formulas only here. 
pasting it formulas only here pasting it wait that's all that's it <laughs> all right now we can copy this down and see if we're still in balance so boom boom and this should turn green if we're good green is good all right let's put an underline under here so that looks good so we're in balance now i need to check the the ending balance in inventory to the ending balance in my sub ledger so what i'm going to do is i'm going to unfreeze the panes again let's go to the view tab and i'm going to say uh unfreeze and then maybe i scroll down see if i could do the split screen again because what i want to see is this this is my inventory number right there let's go all the way over to like here and then see if i can split the pane like right above it so i could see that number so i'm going to go to the view tab and split the panes so there's the number that i want to match to so i'm going to scroll up and say all right let me scroll over here and say oh that 39976 should tie out to that let's do so that's that's my check figure so let's fix this one the check figure was up here now i'm just going to adjust the second check figure it should tie out to that number if it does it makes a green zero so my sub ledger ties out to my general ledger account and i have the sub ledger giving me all the information tracking the units of inventory and the cost of the inventory not the sales price isn't in here that's a different number but we have what we need to track the inventory thus far all right let's unsplit the panes and do it again because that was good times <laughs> Whew. let's try another one let's try another one here we go oh let's i'm gonna go up top again i'm gonna put my cursor over here this time and freeze the panes or freeze the panes and then we're gonna go down all right let's do it again ultra vase ultra vase we're gonna say this is gonna be okay so now let's say we're gonna buy inventory on 115 we're gonna buy inventory for cash again and this time we're gonna buy a g i u s a and a GSB. How many are we going to buy? We're going to buy three of the GI USAs and 10 of the GSBs. I'm going to indent this one a bit. Home tab alignment indent. All right, so the journal entry is going to be then inventory is going to go up by three units of this inventory type times. Do we have a GI USA yet? Let me scroll over. I don't even know if we have that, dude. I don't even think. Oh, yeah, we do. So here's our GI USA. So that's uh, uh, $304. So that's going to be $900. Okay. And then we have a GSB. Do we have any of those? This is going to be equal to 10 of those plus or times a GSB. So do we have a GSB? No, we don't have one of those yet. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete that for now. And I have to add a GSB. So let's see, how am I going to do this? Let's try doing the sub ledger first this time. So I'm going to scroll this time. I'm going to unsplit the panes. Let's go uh, unfreeze the panes. And then I'm going to put this at the bottom again. So this is at the bottom bit. So it's in the bottom corner. Like right there. And then I'm going to go right into this cell and split the panes. And then I'm going to scroll up top. Oh, no, no, not down there. I have to click up top and then scroll. Oh, now it's. Oh, dude. You messed it up, man. It's okay. Okay, and then I'm going to scroll. I'm going to click up here and then scroll. And I'm going to go all the way to the right. All right, so we have a G-I-U-S-A. Let's put that in play. So we're going to say this is going to be a G-I-U-S-A. So we're going to say that we're on 115. Let's format the cells. Right-click, format the cell and date 
this one, boom, and then I'll put 115. And then we're gonna say we bought three of those and they cost $304 for a total of three times 304, pulling that to the right-hand side, ending inventory, three more units. They still cost $304, three times 304 is 912. I'm gonna put an underline here, home tab, font group underline, summing up the units. We currently have six units. They still all cost $304. So that means we have six units of the GI USA's times $304 comes out to that amount. So now I'm gonna copy this and add another uh, inventory worksheet over here. So I'm gonna put my cursor on the skinny cause I wanna paste the skinny too. I'm gonna go from the skinny all the way to the BW. I wanna copy the formatting here. So I'm gonna right click and copy right click and copy and then I'm going to put it right in here and right click and uh, paste paste the copied cells and it should push everything to the right so I go boom pushes everything to the right over here because I had the whole column so I think that's correct so now I'm just going to delete the stuff that's over here this one is now going to be a G S B and I'm going to delete the stuff that's currently in it because that's what was in the last one. So I'll just delete all this stuff, maybe down to here. And then underneath it, we have this, delete this name. We have another one down here that I'll deal with later. Let's remove all of it for now. Okay, so now I'm going to say this date. Let's copy that 115 in the first cell 115 okay and then we're gonna say on 115 we bought 10 units equals 10 units and I'm gonna imagine that they cost now I'm gonna have to get the what do they cost we're gonna say that they cost five hundred and ninety eight dollars so a total cost of ten times five ninety eight pulling that make this larger Pulling that into my outer column, this equals 10, 598. This is gonna be this times this. And then I'm just gonna say this equals the one above it. And this equals the one above it. And that should bring it down. Let's get rid of the underline over here. All right, so there we have it. So now I'm gonna go to my total because this total is gonna be messed up now because I need to add that other cell because if I look at everything that's included in here, it doesn't include uh, these last two, right? It doesn't include this bit. So I need to fix that. So I'm gonna go, okay, let's go into here, go to the end of it. I'm gonna go to the end of it and say plus, and then we'll pick up, uh, we'll pick up this one plus the one below it there's nothing in it yet but i've got this blank one that i'll add to later so i might as well pick that one up so now this is going to be the sum of all of our inventory units which should tie out to what's on the gl once we're done so let's go ahead and do that now so i'm going to say okay let's unsplit again view tab remove the split go to the right i'm going to now freeze the panes again uh, view tab, freeze the panes, scrolling down. So now we bought this equals 10 units. And I'm going to say times. I'll scroll up to the top all the way to the right to pick up that cost, which we have now added in our worksheet. It's going to be 598. All right. So there we have that. And then the cash goes down by the 912 and the 598. So that means that our transactions don't have any impact because one asset went up and one asset went down. So that looks correct. Let's put some zeros across the board for formatting sake. For formatting sake, zeros across the board. 
and then zeros across the board otra vez zeros across the board oh not on the plus sign oh now i messed up that dang it zeros across the board and then we'll put an underline underline here dude underline here dude and then underline here boom and then we will uh put the balance balance is going to be equal to the sum of those two we'll copy that across right click and paste formulas only right click and paste formulas only right click and paste formulas only and one more time right click and paste formulas only now we can check our number to see if that we're in balance i'm going to put my cursor over here where we're on the inventory right there and see if i can view and unfreeze the panes which is going to mess things up unfreeze the panes scroll down to the bottom again there's uh where's the inventory number i'm looking for now wait a sec i didn't total it up properly i should have totaled up up to here all right let's do that again not just one transaction pasting that across formulas only pasting that across formulas only pasting that across formulas only should bring down the balances let's double check that we're still in balance over here before we check our sub ledger copying this down copying this down and that red should turn green i'll put an underline under these home tab font group underline and now here's my inventory line right here i'm going to put that on the bottom and i'll put my cursor right next to it and go to the view tab split the panes i can't quite see it let's undo that oh man no let's redo that let's unsplit the panes and go down a little bit further so i'll go right here so that's my now i got confused here's my inventory right there we'll go to the right a little bit okay let's try it again split the panes there's my inventory up to the right and check my check figure so there there it is so this 46 ties out to that 46 let's just undo this last one and fix my check figure should tie out to that so it ties out so that looks good let's unsplit the panes scroll to the right okay whoo let's do one more this will be an easy one we're just going to buy one thing this time so this also happens we'll say 115 buy inventory for cash and we're going to buy a duk i will indent that insert or a uh, home tab indent we're going to put that into the inventory i'm going to scroll up top again put my cursor here so i can see my headers and go to the view freeze panes scroll down so now i can see where my inventory is it's right there i probably could have guessed where it was anyways oh wait a sec we're gonna buy three of those that's not a three i'm getting tired you're wearing down it's been a long time this has been hard work right here three times i'm scrolling all the way to the top all the way to the right i'm looking for that d u k which i believe is right there so so here it is down here so the cost of these this is a ukulele so it's a lot cheaper it's 24 dollars. so that's going to be 72 dollars, and we'll say the cash is going to be negative of that 72 put zeros across the board zeros across the board okay and then i'm going to put an underline underneath it we'll put the underline home tab underline and then we'll put an underline and then we'll put an underline and then 
I will copy this down to see if we remain in balance. So no impact on assets because one asset went up, the other went down. Zeros across the board. Therefore, we'll pull down the balance, which is going to be equal to the sum of the prior balance plus the current activity. Copy that across. Copy that across, pasting it just the formulas only. Pasting it formulas only. Pasting it formulas only. Do, 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 do. Let's check our balance now. And pull down the balance to see if we're still in balance on the total. There we go. Boom, boom. This red should turn green. I'll put an underline here. Bup, bup, bup. And then we'll fix our subledger, which means we on the subledger we sold three of them so i'm going to go let's put let's unfreeze the panes view unfreeze go to the bottom ba -ba -bam, and then right there i'm going to put my cursor right here and then split the panes go to the top of the split panes scroll to my sub ledger where i can find the duc which is down here there it is and we're going to say this happened on 115 so i could i could copy this 115 so the formatting is correct and then we purchased three unit cost 24 total cost three times 24 pulling that to the inventory three at 24 gives me once again the total of three times 24 I will put an underline here, home tab, underline, and then I'm going to sum this up. We now have four units of the ukulele. They all cost $24. Four times 24 is 96. Let's adjust our total then again. So I'm going to go to the view tab and unsplit the panes. And then I'll scroll down looking for the inventory number which I believe is that 46 right there. So I'll go to that 46. Let's go to the right a little bit more. And I want to put that kind of on the bottom somewhere around here. Split the panes. View. Split the panes. Go to the top. Once again, go to my check figure on the right. So now that 46.9, there's the 46.9. So my check figure is going to be this minus the 46.9. So my sub ledger ties out once again to what's on my general ledger in essence. Wow. Whew. Undo. I think that's correct. That was a, that was a lot, man. I'm going to put my split panes up top again. I'm going to go to the uh, view tab and freeze the panes. That's my default position. Okay. So I think everything is rolling.